Um, yeah, that's not that important. Okay, um, this is important. Why is this important? Um, because in a chemical reaction, things react in a specific proportion. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's use an example here. So here's a real chemical equation. We have three hydrogens get together with one nitrogen to make two ammonia. So yeah. we can build mole-to-mole -mole ratios mm -hmm. here. Now, one thing about the balanced equation, folks, is um, the, the, the numbers in front, the coefficients, those refer to specific uh, numbers of molecules on a really small scale. They also refer to number of moles on a larger scale. Exactly. So either, either way, we can use them as that ratio. So let's build some mole-to-mole -mole ratios. Okay. I can say now two moles of NH3 mm -hmm. is equal to three moles of H2. Now folks, here's something very important. Remember we've talked about the naked numbers. You must not just write two over three. Mm -mm. In fact, you can't just say two moles over three moles. No. You have to say two moles of NH3 over two moles of hydrogen. Yeah. You must have the number. Yeah. Yeah. You must have the unit, moles. Yeah. You must have the chemical, hydrogen, yeah. ammonia, whatever it might be. So this is one fraction. Uh, can we think of any more here? Um, yeah, sure. Let's, six um, of them, I yeah, think. There's, uh, there are six. Um, let's do uh, n one mole of nitrogen. Where do you get one mole? Uh, the, I don't see a one in here. Well, if it's blank, it's a one. Yeah, so right here, folks, we've got N, too, but there's no number. But, of course, that implies it's a one. One yeah. mole of nitrogen is? Um, over uh, two moles in H3. Okay, and we could flip this, guys, right? We could also write two moles of NH3 is equal to one mole of one N2. One mole of N2. Oh, why, why don't we go ahead and flip the first one we did, the two? Oh, yeah, and we could flip this one, and we can say three moles of hydrogen is equal to two moles of NH3. Okay. We need these numbers, guys, if we're trying to predict, you know, how many bicycles we're going to make. So mm -hmm. if I had uh, 16 wheels, I could predict how many bicycles I can mm -hmm. make. Okay, and then I could figure it out pretty easily. All right, actually, should we do that? There. What? So if we go back to our bicycle recipe, mm -hmm. let's say we had 16 wheels. Right. How many bikes could I make? Um, I don't know, but I think if I had a ratio that I could figure that out. So what you do is you'd say 16 wheels. Start with what you know, put it over one. one. Okay times a fraction or you know the railroad track thing railroad yeah. track thing well i know that in my recipe there are two wheels mm -hmm. so i'll say 2w and i want to know how many bikes we're going to make well the ratio is 2 to 1 mm -hmm. so, so one, one bike bike what happens to w w's cancel so it's 16 times 1 over 2 well that's just eight bikes eight bikes now guys you knew that of course if you had right. 16 wheels you can make eight bikes but we need to show it to you sort of uh, dimensionally yeah. mathematically now because that's how you're going to do this right. in the um, that's why we taught you railroad tracks in unit 1 so you could do it here yeah um, now there's one assumption we're making here mr Bergman. what's that um, well we're assuming that we have plenty plenty of yeah. frames um, frames and seats yeah and later on we'll talk about what happens when you don't have plenty of frames right. and seats so. But for now, assume that if there are more than one reactant, that you have plenty of the other one and that you're only can limited by the one that you have. Good. All right, now let's go for back forward. All right, so now that we have kind of figured out the whole ratio thing, mm -hmm. Mr. Sams, I think we need to discuss what was called the mole map. So right. it helps us to understand how mm -hmm. to do these calculations. And, guys, if you look in your packet, uh, the mole map is in your packet. Uh, it's page three or four or something like that. Right, and if you're watching this on the Internet, as some of you I know are, um, you're gonna, uh, your teacher, whoever bought the CD or the DVD, um, can get access to that on the DVD. Mm -hmm. So okay, all right. So this is called the stoichiometry flow chart, or sometimes we like to the call land it. of the mole. I like the mole map. It's a little simpler. But you don't get to say it like the land of the mole. You say the mole map. No? no? Okay. No, all right. All right. Guys, um, notice there's a few things X'd out. We're not going to talk about those in this unit. Those are on units to come. Um, so that you'll actually be using this probably uh, pretty much for the rest of the year. So hang on to it. Don't lose it. Yep. All right. So, so we've got we go. representative particles. Particles, yeah. Particles. That's like atoms and molecules. Atoms and molecules. Yep. Now, we've actually kind of done, if you will, if you think about this, yeah. kind of a divide we've this in half. half. We've done the first half already in the previous mm -hmm. unit, or uh, two units ago, I guess, when we converted grams to moles and moles to whatever. So if you want to go from representative particles to Avogadro's number, then you get moles. 
in that moles to molar mass or, or to grams. You'll use the molar mass right here. These are the these are the conversions. Those are the conversions factors. there on the arrows. And then yep. if you're going to go to liters, you use the 22.4 liters. Yeah. And there's some other things that we'll worry about later. But there's something very important here called yes. the mole ratio. Mm, that's how you go from one substance in the reaction to another substance in the reaction. So we have a, a given chemical, moles of A, and we're trying to find a new chemical, chemical B. Yeah. All right. And so we'll use this as we do a couple problems, yeah. and it'll be more obvious. Okay. So. Hey, so when we're doing a mass-mass calculation, here are the rules that you need to follow. Number one, balance the chemical equation. Number two, write down the amounts under each chemical. Number three, put a question mark and a unit by the chemical in question, and then do the stoic to determine the amount. So these are the rules. So I would recommend you just uh, pause the video and copy this down. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's do an example. Let's do one. 12.3 moles of potassium chloride. Now, what was rule number one? Uh, I believe it said we had to have a balanced chemical equation. Hey. Hey, look, we have a balanced chemical <laughs> equation. Mr. Sams, you wrote a balanced chemical equation. That's pretty good. All right, so we got nice a balanced thing. chemical equation. It was given to you. Sometimes yeah. you're not going to have a balanced chemical equation. You're going to have to like to figure it out what it is. Just like you did in unit four. Like unit four. So, okay. So now what we do is we write down what we know underneath what we know. Okay. So we have potassium chloride, KClO3, and I know I've got 12. 0.3 moles of it. So I write it underneath there. So and guys, this is just kind of the planning stage here. We're not solving the problem yet. We're figuring no. out what we know and where we're, looking, where we're headed. And then it says how many mole of O2 will be formed. So O2 is right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a question mark. See, I'm following my rules yep. under there. And I just put a question mark and I'm going to write what unit I want moles. in it. I want moles. So I want to convert moles of this to moles of that. Mm -hmm. Basically, if I've got 12.3 moles of potassium chloride, how many moles of oxygen will I produce? How many right. bikes will I make, yeah. if you will, in our analogy? Yeah, so let's go to the, the, to the mole map here real quick, okay. or to the land of the mole. That's painful, Mr. Sanders. I know. All right, so right now we have moles of a chemical. Uh -huh. We had 12.3 or whatever, yep. right? And then it asks us to go to moles of B. Well, just a mole to mole. Yeah. So in this mole map, all we need to look at is this portion of the box. On this problem, yes, because yeah. we have moles. We're going to moles. So our, our step is we just use the mole ratio Right here, it's very there. important that what we're going to be doing is doing the mole ratio. So right. I start with what I know, which Put is 12.3 12 12 moles. moles of KClO3, of K not CLO3. Not just moles. Yeah, over one. Okay. Now the mole ratio, where do we get those again? Well, that's from the balanced chemical oh, equation. Yeah. So there's a two here. And so I'm going to say, well, actually, you know what I like to do? I say moles of KClO3, and I want to go to moles of, O2. moles of O2. I like to just put the units first and then go add the numbers yeah. later. And so if I look here, what number goes here? This number is a two. two. And up here for oxygen, this is a three. So now I get my calculator out. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Sams is uh, furiously typing on the calculator. So 12.3 divided by times 3 divided by 2, and you get 18.45. 18.5 uh, so moles yeah. of oxygen. The moles of KClO3 here Those cancels, units cancel. and you're left with moles of oxygen. That's it. So if you start with 12.3 moles of this, you will make this many moles of oxygen, 18 and a half. It's just figuring out how much you're going to make, or how much it came from, or whatever. Yep. Okay, well, let's do a different problem. Okay.